take a look at this spacecraft. This model was unveiled for the first time at the Zhuhai Air Show in November 2024. Its name is Haolong-1. Together with another spacecraft called Qingzhou, they form the next generation cargo spacecraft that China wants to send to space. And for this, China has radically changed its way of doing things. So in this video, let's dive into what are Qingzhou and Haolong-1, who are designing them, and why this is transforming how China handles its space program. This video is sponsored by Incogni. More on them later. This is Tianzhou. It's China's main cargo spacecraft in service since 2017, launching every nine months on a long March 7 to bring provisions, propellant, and science experiments to astronauts on the Chinese space station. Its payload capacity is 7.5 tons. This is a pretty big payload capacity, especially when compared to equivalent spacecraft around the world. But this gives less flexibility, as larger capacities mean less frequent launches. So China needed a smaller spacecraft, and here is where things get interesting. On May 16th, 2023, China's Human Spaceflight Agency, CMSA, published a request for proposals for a quote-unquote low-cost cargo transportation system to the Chinese space station. The document was clear. Candidate projects would have to be flexible, reliable, and cheaper. Specifically, payload capacities to the CSS would have to be at least of 1.8 tons, there should be at least 7 cubic meters of pressurized cargo space, the spacecraft should be able to dock and stay docked to the CSS for at least 3 months, likely to serve as additional storage space, the spacecraft should be able to rid the CSS of at least 2 tons of waste when it undocks and burns into the atmosphere, and costs per ton to the station should be below 120 million Chinese yuan. For reference, 120 million Chinese yuan per ton, that's roughly 16,000 US dollars per kilogram, which is the same order of magnitude as what NASA is charging for the ISS. What's very new with this Chinese RFP, however, is that it is public and open to all companies, including commercial companies. And this was China's first step into the commercialization of its space program, and it strongly echoes NASA's efforts in the late 2000s with the commercial resupply and commercial crew programs, which ultimately led to the development of Cygnus, Dragon, Dream Chaser, and Starliner. In September 2023, it was announced that nine companies had applied to China's low-cost cargo spacecraft tender. There were the usual suspects, state-owned entities like CALT, SAST, CAST, AVIC, and Shanghai Microsat, but there were also commercial companies composed of Aspace, Minospace, Beijing Interspace, and Orion Space. In September 2023, four entities were selected among the nine to receive engineering support for a detailed design phase. And in 2024, it became clear that two suppliers had been selected, the Haolong-1 from AVIC and Qingzhou from Shanghai Microsat. Now, before we get into the details of each spacecraft, I just want to mention that a lot of research is put into videos like this one, including signing up to industry-specific newsletters, social media platforms, and other research tools. I'm sure you've experienced what I'm about to describe. The more we sign up to these online services, the more we share personal data, and the more we get junk email and random robocalls. For me, it had gotten to a point where every time my phone rang, I knew there was a 50% chance it was a company trying to sell me a cheaper electricity or phone plan or just some other form of subscription. And this is where the sponsor of this video, Incogni, can help. The information you share with any online service, like a streaming app or a ride-hailing platform, is often a target for hackers. And once your data is stolen, it's sold to third-party data brokers who turn a profit by trading these massive collections of personal data. There's actually a free website I really suggest you check out called Have I Been Pawned, where you can enter your email address and see if your data has been exposed. And more often than not, the results are pretty scary. But Incogni changes all of this. 
Their services reach out on your behalf to data brokers, requesting your personal data removal and dealing with any kind of objection on their side. And this is a continuous process. As long as you use their service, Incogni will relentlessly reach out whenever a new record comes up on a data broker's website. To get started, it's very straightforward. All you have to do is sign up, authorize them to reach out on your behalf, and then you just sit back and watch them work. If you've dealt with the frustration of junk email or random robocalls like I have, I highly recommend giving Incogni a try. You can sign up to their services at incogni.com slash dongfang. And naturally, don't forget the code dongfang as it gets you the exclusive 60% off discount and it helps support the channel. Thank you, Incogni, for supporting this video. And with that, back to China's Qingzhou and Halong One spacecraft. Of the two cargo spacecraft selected by China, the Halong One is the most eye catching. With a length of 10 meters, a total width of 8 meters, it adopts a space plane approach with swept back delta wings that generate lift, enabling the spacecraft to land horizontally on a runway. It has a payload capacity of 1.8 tons to the Chinese space station and has a standard Chinese docking mechanism at the rear, enabling it to be connected to one of the Chinese space station's docking ports. Its wings are foldable, enabling it to fit within the payload fairings of a launch vehicle. Today, we don't really know which rocket will launch the Halong 1, but the spacecraft is said to be less than half the weight of Tianzhou, meaning that it would weigh probably less than 7 tons. And it was also reported that the Halong 1 would launch on commercial rockets, and there are many potential options in this payload capacity range, such as Galactic Energy's Palace 1 or iSpace's Hyperbola 3. The Halong One's ability to re-enter the atmosphere and return safely to the ground will massively increase China's ability to bring payloads from the Chinese space station back to Earth. Up to now, this was done by the Shenzhou spacecraft's return capsule, which is already occupied by three astronauts during the return trip. And despite the astronauts cramming the place with bags, Shenzhou can barely bring back 50 kilograms of payload from space. There's been eight Shenzhou missions since the beginning of the deployment of the Chinese space station in 2021. In other words, 400 kilograms have been brought back over eight missions. Now, to put things a little bit into perspective here, how long one would be able to bring down four times this amount in one single mission? Now, it's unclear when the maiden launch of the Halong 1 will take place, but the chief engineer Feng Yuanpeng described the spacecraft as having finished the preliminary design phase, and now it was entering the engineering design phase, which sounds like there's still a lot of work to do, and there's probably a couple of years before this spacecraft enters service. Now, competing with the Halong 1 is the Qingzhou spacecraft, which will launch for the first time in September 2025. Architecture-wise, it is very different. The spacecraft consists of a single integrated module, which will have 27 square meters to host payloads for the Chinese space station, as well as spacecraft systems such as propulsion. An optional refrigeration unit will be proposed to send up, for example, fresh produce or temperature sensitive experiments. Qingzhou's payload capacity was reported by the Chinese television to be between 1.8 tons and 2 tons, and while this spacecraft is not reusable, it will be used as a means to offload waste, carrying up to 2.9 tons of it when Qingzhou undocks and burns up in the Earth's atmosphere. The cost of the Qingzhou spacecraft was quoted to be around 100 million Chinese yuan per ton sent to space, which is about 15% below the RFP's upper limits of 120 million Chinese yuan. The designer of the spacecraft is Shanghai Microsat, a satellite manufacturer connected to the Chinese Academy of Sciences, and the launch will take place on top of Allegiant 2, a medium lift rocket manufactured by, again, a Chinese Academy of Sciences spin-off called Caspace. Now, did you notice that the winners of the Chinese commercial cargo RFP were all state-owned companies? AVIC is China's biggest aerospace conglomerate, while China Microsat is one of China's top state-owned manufacturers through the Chinese Academy of Sciences. 
Some may interpret this as China favoring its state companies, creating an uneven playing field for commercial companies, despite a tender theoretically open to all. But I disagree, and for two reasons. Firstly, this open tender approach is gaining momentum in China. It's not just about commercial cargo. China has recently used it to source its future crewed lunar rover. But more importantly, the real reason why Chinese commercial companies are not selected is probably because they don't have the necessary level of maturity, or at least not yet. Maybe in terms of level of financial robustness or expertise in advanced space technology. A lot of core technology is still situated within the Chinese state space ecosystem, although this is slowly changing. And a good illustration of this change is the increasing involvement of Chinese commercial companies, commercial launch companies, as they're being selected to launch in the near future, China's future Starlink-like mega constellations, which are Xinguang and Qianfan. Or perhaps another example is China's state-owned rocket company, SAST, deciding to source their Methlox engines, at least partly, from a commercial manufacturer like Jojo and Jet. Anyway, these are exciting times for the Chinese space station. Today it has three docking ports, which are used by Shenzhou and the Tianzhou spacecraft. And in the future, we are going to see Haolongwon and Qingzhou spacecraft docking, as well as the upcoming Orion-like Mengzhou crewed spacecraft. So what do you think about the commercialization of the Chinese space program? Do you think that this trend will continue to grow in a similar way to how NASA has progressively commercialized its procurement over the past 20 years? Let me know in the comments below. As always, I want to say a special thank you to my patrons on Patreon.com and YouTube memberships. Your support is awesome and goes a long way in making this channel a long-term thing. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.